Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. In this video, we're gonna show you how to check the fuel flow and the fuel pressure on your fuel injected dirt or street motorcycle. The fuel pump is a key component for your bike to run correctly. If you have problems with this or your fuel filters, you're gonna have some issues. So what those issues commonly look like are a bike with poor acceleration, or maybe you have a bog or cutout from mid to high RPM, or maybe the bike doesn't even start at all. So all of those issues could be caused by other things, but we're gonna show you how to get to the bottom of your problems and find out if the fuel pump or these filters are the culprit. Now we're gonna show you how to do these checks on a dual sport motorcycle and a dirt bike. Now your street bikes, it's gonna be a similar process. You just gain access to the fuel pump and do the same checks. But whatever bike you're working on, you wanna to refer to your model specific service manual for more information and specs. Your diagnosis will determine what parts you need. Now, maybe you just need a fuel filter and fuel screens. We even have the inline fuel screens. Or if you found that your pump is bad, we have rebuild kits. Those come with the pickup screens and your O-rings or if you just want to replace the fuel pump assembly, we have those as well. But whatever you find, check out our website. We have a lot of different options for fuel related parts on there. To do this job, you're gonna need a fuel pressure tester with the correct fittings for your bike. This fitting is a pretty common one, but if you have a KTM, you can actually get the quick disconnect fittings and then use a fuel pressure gauge that has a T. You're gonna use some high pressure lines and Get those set up with your T and use that with your gauge. Now, other than that, we also need a straight piece of fuel line. That's gonna help us do a fuel flow test. We have a vacuum cap, and that's gonna be for when we flip the dirt bike tanks upside down. Bungee cord, that's gonna help keep these gauges away from the exhaust or any hot components. We've got some common hand tools, our digital multimeter, some contact cleaner, you wanna spray any fuel connections off before you disconnect them. You don't wanna get any dirt in there. And then we also have silicone spray or some silicone grease. Now for these O-rings on these quick disconnect fittings, I like to put some of that on there. It helps everything go together and come apart really easy. And then when we do our fuel flow test, we're gonna use a ratio right to do our measurement. And when you release the pressure from these fuel gauges, it's gonna leak a little bit of fuel out. So we're gonna use a drain pan to catch that. Before we do anything else, we're gonna check our battery voltage and make sure the battery is in good condition. If the battery is low, you wanna recharge it or replace it if necessary. And for our battery, we're actually a little low, so we're gonna recharge it before we do anything else. So if you think you're having issues with your fuel pump, you wanna check the obvious stuff first. So make sure you have gas in the tank, and then we're gonna listen and make sure the fuel pump is actually coming on. So on this bike, I'm gonna turn the key and listen for the fuel pump to cycle for three seconds. So our fuel pump cycled and we know it's operating. So we're gonna go ahead and check the fuel pressure. If your fuel pump didn't operate or didn't cycle, then we're gonna show you how to check for power going down to the pump later on. Now, before you hook up the fuel pressure gauge, you wanna make sure that the engine's cool. You don't wanna get any fuel on hot exhaust. So we've done that and we've already removed some panels out of the way just to better show the process. Now with this, depending on what bike you have will determine where you hook up your pressure gauge. Some, you're gonna hook it up at the fuel pump itself. Other ones like this Husky, you're gonna just use this quick disconnect that's in the middle of the fuel line. And you need to make sure that you have the correct adapters to get your gauge hooked up. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our quick connect. And you know, some of these bikes, they show you a procedure to relieve any fuel pressure. If your manual gives you one of those, you wanna follow it. I'm just gonna take a rag and cover the connection while I disconnect it. So to make our fuel gauge work in line with these quick connectors, we just got a couple more and clamp those down to our T that goes to our gauge. 
So once we have those adapters clipped in, I'm gonna go ahead and screw my gauge on. Then we have this pressure relief hose. I'm just gonna run that down to a drain pan. And last, I'm just gonna bungee cord all these fuel lines away from the exhaust so they don't get hot. All right, so now we're gonna turn the key on. We're not gonna start the bike yet. We just wanna check for any leaks. So we don't have any leaks, but if you don't have any leaks and this needle starts dropping down, that indicates a bad check valve inside the pump. And that's designed to keep pressure in the fuel system and just helps with starting. So that's something to keep in mind. Ours obviously is dropping a little bit. And then at this point, we need to run the bike and make sure that our fuel pressure is within the specified range. So our bike, it should be 41 to 46 PSI, and it should consistently stay in that range even if you give the bike some throttle. Now when we ran our bike, the pressure was right in spec even when we gave it throttle. So we're looking okay on pressure, but if your pressure was too high, that indicates a bad pressure regulator. Typically those are found inside the fuel pump and you have to replace the whole pump if they're bad. And you know, the symptoms from too much pressure is the bike is gonna be running rich. Now, some pressure regulators are mounted outside of the fuel tank. If that's the case with yours, you wanna check the return line for any restrictions and the vacuum line going to that regulator. Now, if both of those things check out, then you're gonna to have to replace that pressure regulator. Now, if your pressure is too low or didn't stay consistent and dropped when you're giving it throttle, then the bike is gonna be running lean and you need to take care of that issue. So typically you're gonna be replacing your fuel pump, but if you had clogged fuel filters, we're gonna show you how to check if it's the filters or the pump in a second by doing a fuel flow test. Now, before we disconnect everything, we let the bike cool down, that way we don't get any gas on a hot exhaust. And then the gauge has a pressure relief valve right here. So we just need to press that, let all the pressure out, and then we can disconnect everything. To check for fuel flow, we're just using the same connector into the fuel line that goes to the fuel pump. Some of you might be able to just clamp a hose directly onto the fuel pump, and then we're just using a ratio right to measure how much fuel actually comes out. And we're just gonna do three key cycles. All we're really looking for is a nice solid stream coming out of here and making sure the fuel doesn't drizzle. Now, if you need a spec for how much fuel should flow out of there, you can check your service manual for that. But again, we're just checking for a nice solid stream of fuel coming out of there. So I'm gonna turn the key on. and let the fuel pump cycle, and then we'll do that two more times. So with three key cycles, we're almost 125 milliliters, but again, the main thing I was looking for is a nice solid stream out of there, and that's what we had, so we know our filters are good. Now, even though we had good fuel flow coming out of our bike, doesn't mean you wanna neglect the maintenance intervals for your fuel filters or your pickup screen. Now, the off-road dirt bikes, typically they're gonna have a maintenance interval for the screen on the pump. Make sure you stay up on that as well as, like this bike, we have a fuel filter after the pump and then we also have an inline filter. And we need to make sure we stay up on that and that helps prevent any of those low fuel flow problems that you might run into. So on our bike, our fuel pump is right here. So to check for power going down to it, we just disconnected our electrical connector. We're gonna check for power across both of these paper clips that we used to back probe the wires. And we're gonna turn our key on and check for 12 volts. Now, if your fuel pump is really hard to get to, you can start by checking your fuses and checking that fuel pump relay. But for us, we wanna make sure that power is coming all the way down to the fuel pump, so that's why we're checking it down here. Now you'll notice on our meter that it went just under 12 volts for a second, and then the voltage dropped and went away. 
And that's exactly what should happen if you have power down to the fuel pump. If your fuel pump didn't cycle when that happens, then you know it's bad and needs to be replaced. Now, if you didn't get any power down to your fuel pump, that's when you're gonna to wanna to be checking your fuses and your fuel pump relay. And then you're also gonna to wanna to be checking your service manual, check the wiring diagram, and start making inspections and find out why you're not getting power down to your fuel pump. Now for your dirt bikes, most of the steps that we showed you are gonna be similar to our other bike. The difference is instead of cycling the key, you're gonna be pushing the starter button. So if we check for fuel pump operation, I'm just gonna hit the starter button real quick and the fuel pump's probably only gonna operate for about a second. So when I hit that starter button, I can hear the fuel pump cycle. So I know I can go ahead and check the fuel pressure and the fuel flow on this bike. But if you didn't hear the pump cycle, then you're gonna check for power down at the pump the same way we did on the other bike, but you're just gonna tap that starter button and see if you have power down there. Another thing to note with the dirt bikes is if you have a KTM, you're probably gonna be able to just check the fuel pressure the same way we did on that other bike. But this Honda, we're gonna flip the tank over. So we're gonna plug that cap. We're gonna let it hang off the side while we make all our connections. It actually has a little cable to hang it from. This style of connector is a little more common. So this one, we're just gonna pop up the green tab. Sometimes it's a red tab, or you might have to press in on some buttons to get that to release, depending on what bike you're working on. But for this one, we popped up the green tab, then we're just gonna work that fuel line off. And then obviously this is the other style of gauge, a different style of gauge. So we'll slide that into place and make sure that it is fully clipped on. Then we can reconnect the fuel line with that all the way on, press down the green connector. And then I'm just pulling on this lightly to make sure that nothing's gonna pop off. Now we're gonna move the fuel tank to the upright position and we're gonna leave a little gap underneath so that we don't pinch any fuel lines. And then we're gonna hit the starter button and let the bike run and see what the pressure is. The spec on this bike is 48 to 52 PSI. We've let our bike cool down, we disconnected our gauge, and now we're gonna do a fuel flow output test. Now there are special tools, but we're gonna show you how to do this for the average guy that's just doing this in his garage. So I'm just getting a piece of fuel line and I'm gonna clamp that onto the fuel pump outlet. Now we're gonna put the fuel tank in the upright position, the same way we did for the fuel pressure check. And we're gonna hit our starter button and check for good flow. So as I crank this over, we had a nice flow. And as far as flow goes on this, we know we're good. After doing those tests, we know that our fuel pump is good, but if you found any issues with yours and need to get the parts replaced, check out our website. We have OEM and aftermarket parts on there. And if you need help installing those parts, we have several different how-to videos to help guide you through that process. So check those videos out and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.